One of the great things about flying, when you're up there, climbing, descending, loops, rolls, it's fun. You can just, just do what you think you want to do. And like other mediums, it has certain things that it does well and it has certain limitations, you know. Managing the airplane's energy to do what you want it to do is, is a fun challenge. And every day is a little bit different. My name is Emerson Stewart, and I'm a flight instructor at the Red Stewart Airfield. I grew up right here. I was, I think I, I went for my first airplane ride when I was four days old. I started flying a glider when I was 13. Sold it when I was 14. Sold an airplane and got my glider rating when I was 16. And I've been flying ever since. My grandpa Red was the fellow that started the airport back in 1946. It was a pretty simple little place for a while. The thing that makes the airport unique is that we're still doing the same thing we've always done with the same equipment we've always done it with. We started off with little light airplanes in the 40s, and we're still using the same sorts of little light airplanes. Part of what makes the place special is the people that work here are excited to make the place go and, and want to be here helping to make the place continue. Red Stewart Airfield is awesome. It's uncomplicated. It's in the middle of a cornfield, and uh, years ago they decided to put a little grass strip of runway in there. You show up, you make sure the airplane's ready to go, you jump in, turn the key, and you're flying in next to no time. I guess the obvious thing is it's a, a grass strip. It's very low tech, it's old fashioned airplanes. Uh, most of the airplanes out here don't even have an electrical system. You gotta hand start them, it's pure flying. My name is Brett Hunter. I run a little flight department over in Springboro, Ohio. And on the side, I do some aerobatics, including air shows. Everyone shares one thing in common, their enthusiasm and passion for flight. And when they arrive here, all the formalities disappear. You don't have a battle of egos or anything like that weighing the atmosphere down. It's fantastic. Hello, I'm Robert Tico Lacerda. I started flying aerobatics back around 1990 or so. First time I'd been in a small airplane, it was also the first time I did aerobatics. We did loops and rolls and loved it from the very get-go. Saturday evening of Labor Day weekend, we have an annual air show. It's good to get people out, give them a little entertainment, and show them what little airplanes can do. It's a unique air show in that it's, it's a very up close and personal air show. Accessibility for the performers to the fans and vice versa, I think is unmatched. Well, you wanna start with something that grabs their attention, something loud and maybe dramatic. You want to finish with something that grabs their attention that they remember you with. Somewhere in the middle, try not to repeat anything. Part of the fun with planning it is you figure out what your airplane does well, what it looks nice doing, and you figure out how those pieces can fit together. Then during the season, yeah, you'll, you'll work on the sequence and if you're gonna add anything new, create something new, you wanna practice that individual part way up high, find out where the, the problems are, where the gotchas are, start bringing it down low where the, uh, the altitude makes a big difference. So transitioning into, say, a dive, I'm not thinking of it as, you know, oh, we're diving now, it's exciting. I'm thinking of it more, okay, I, I, have, I have altitude and I'm gonna trade it and I'm gonna turn it into airspeed. At the bottom of that dive, you pull back, and, and so now you're converting back to altitude. Positive Gs can feel like an elephant sitting on you. 
to just to lift your arm is an effort. And negative G's feels like you're, all the blood's rushing to your head, so you actually want to try to relax. When you're getting started for the year, you're coming off a cold couple winters, you know, you need to get G tolerance. You need to make sure that you're in tune with the airplane. What this particular aircraft does very well is, is a knife edge pass, which is basically you're tilting the airplane up on its side and going along the ground in a knife edge. Well, airplanes are convenient and make it nice to go point A to B, straight line and a little faster than your car, but it's a lot more fun to go see what an airplane can really do, see what you can do. Upside down, I don't know, it just you can't do that in a car and get away with it more than once, right? It's a bit of a like a roller coaster, but you get to design it and it's smooth. It's fun showing off for the crowd. It's uh, we're careful about the way we do things, but it, yeah, if it makes people smile and entertains them, absolutely, yes, it's satisfying. I would describe aerobatic flying as being an art. I mean, it's a lot of science, right? But it doesn't feel like that at the time. It feels like, it feels like I'm up here drawing shapes in the sky. It's an affliction, if not an addiction, the airplane thing, for sure. I wish it were as reasonably priced as gardening, but uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it gets in your blood and you can't get it out. It's, it's a constant itch. I like to do aerobatics. Aerobatics are, are fun, they're thrilling, but I like to just go fly around. Sometimes I'll just go, go fly around low and see the sights. I don't know, I'll go out by the lake and I'll, I'll it's kind of fun. Sometimes you can find an eagle or something. 